this week we discuss lazy professors, cool cat, dumb YouTube policies, and being baffled by videos made for children. Also, we learn what happens when you accidentally try to clean up deadly bacteria. So, gather around the internet campfire, everyone, because it's episode 4 of Let's Regroup. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Regroup, a podcast where we get off topic, but we'll get there eventually. I am your sweet, lovable host, Casey, and with me, I have uh, three guests. We have, returning again, back from the dead, Dave. My death was greatly exaggerated. Here I be. We also have Rolls. Hello again. And yet another new friendly face to the show. We have Annette. Hello. So how are you guys doing? I'm sorry I keep scaring everyone away, Casey. I, I know, right? <laughs> we have them on one time and then they're gone. God damn it, Rolls. <laughs> Me and my... Keep self-sabotaging this fucking <laughs> my, podcast. Uh, no, let's face my it. He just my to radical Casey political beliefs. <laughs> well, you know what? That's probably true. He probably does want me to all to himself. Yeah, I call it as well, I see it. We're going to record next week, right? So, I'm, Yes. Um, I mean, in an alternate yeah. universe, Rolls and I would be just the gayest of lovers, and we had never been happier. <laughs> I ship it. I can... I, I, I look at... Uh, <laughs> I look at other like professional working relationships to draw comparisons. I firmly believe you are the Adam Kovic to my Bruce Green. Yes. <laughs> if that makes sense. Hey. That's great. That's good because like I have a total man crush on Adam Kovic. Oh, yep, same. I mean, regular crush because yeah. hey. Well, yeah. Um but like this isn't at all what I wanted to open with, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Um, it. Like, so, so, like, I know he's, like, the sad boy, and he's very deadpan and dry humor, but my god, I just find him incredibly attractive. Oh, he's hot. It's, it's his fashion sense, man. I don't know. I guess. Something about the way that he dresses. For me, personally. <laughs> Did I'm you glad watch... we're all in agreement. Yeah. I did mean, you I watch Glass like Glass? That way, so. I did. Oh I my, did he watch did that. so well until like one episode and he just cracked. I know. I'm just... so sad. I'm sad that uh, Lindsay, of all people, cracked so early. That's because she laughs at her own jokes. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm that way too. I probably yeah. didn't survive very long. <laughs> anyway. I'd probably be out in like five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I probably would be. Because I'm like, I'm really good at straight facing things all the time. But if it's my own jokes, I can't. I just can't do it. I know that totally negates my sense of humor, but I don't care. I mean, at no, least it's... you find yourself hilarious. I do, and that's all that you're, matters. You're the, you're the setup man and the straight <laughs> man. You know what I mean? That's No, that's like the perfect... Knowing your personality, that's like the perfect character for you to do. So that's why I run this podcast, guys. Yeah. I set you up so you can all spike that touchdown. Oh, yo. We can spike that touchdown. Spike, spike that touchdown. Is that what they call it? No, that's okay. what you do when you celebrate. You can spike the ball afterwards. You can spike the ball. You gotta have oh, somebody after bounce radios you off spike of. the ball after a touchdown. Listen, <laughs> it's okay, fine. Like volleyball. It was a different thing in volleyball. I think my brain switched junctions at the, like, halfway through me trying to make that analogy. Uh, probably. Dude, if we're gonna be doing, uh, fucking sports analogies, I'm gonna just get off right now. Because <laughs> this is not gonna work out. I know volleyball and some basketball. That's about it. I do know sport ball. Sport ball. Sport ball? It is a sport with a ball. Oh, A+. plus. Um, Yes. Yeah. I'm like a so casual, low. a casual <laughs> sp sports person, in which if it's on, like if somebody else is watching, I'll sit down and watch it. Uh, but otherwise, I wouldn't like seek out watching a game of any kind. Real talk. And I'm, I'm the guy that party. can memorize <laughs> rosters of teams that aren't even my team. <laughs> well, I mean, that's some people but, are absolutely like that. Like I my had a cousin, boss. You know what? My cousin's even crazier with it because he can. 
he'll sit down and be like, you know, oh, uh, just give an example. Uh, Reggie Wayne, formerly of the Indianapolis Colts. And what was his college? He'll ask me, I'm like, I don't know that. Like, how would I? There's so many colleges where you can go pro from, but he somehow has these things memorized. I, I mean, have they're... old rosters, but it's funny the things we can remember, you know? Oh, yeah. I had uh, I had a boss once, uh, not that long ago. I was working in a school, and um, I would always go to, like, one of their offices to just do various clerical work. And all of us were talking about, like, uh, being in high school. And because, like, I was the, uh, uh... like, the video game comic nerd. Um, then we had, uh, one of my other coworkers who was like the theater kid. And then they were like, went over to my boss and was like, what were we, what were you like? Cause like you started out as a chemistry teacher and then became like one of the administrators at like, what, were, what were you doing in high school? Because it's your, your personality is so hard to understand. And he's like, I memorized stats for baseball. That was my yeah. entire life. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I could absolutely see that. That's a special type of sports nerd. Yeah, I mean, it it is a type of but nerd. It's actually and, a show. And he embodied that. In the early 2000s when I was in high school that was on ESPN Classic where, like, it was basically, like, Jeopardy level, like, level of deep trivia. Oh. It was just this guy who could memorize, like, the most insane things, like, uh, who was the na- who was the leading National League hitter and like who was the leading hitter percentage wise in the National League of like nineteen seventy seven? And this guy just knew off the top of his head. But I thought he also probably had trouble mem- memorizing like people's birthdays because <laughs> it seems <laughs> like you're good in, you're good in one or the other. But you're like you I can remember have... a bunch of a bunch of useless facts and whatnot, but I do struggle with birthdays. I mean. That is absolutely me. I know l- many, many useless facts about many, many things, but I very much struggle with math. Oh God, math! Well, we still to this day, like we talked about the other episode. Uh, it, I think if you're a creative into creative writing and stuff, math is usually not your strongest suit. Yeah. Well, see, I here's the weird thing. Oh, go ahead. That seems to be a repeating pattern for me. Go ahead, Annette. Thank you. I do creative writing and algebra and ev- any form of math. I was like, nope, I don't understand. But then calculus made sense. So, like, Ooh. everything, like, everyone was like, calculus is a beast. It's so hard. And I'm like, I got to it. And, like, I was sick to my stomach my very first class. Because I have, was having such anxiety about it. And then I was like, no, no, this makes sense. I, I can see how you got from A to B. But wow. algebra, I'm just like, what? You know, I was kind of that way with statistics, to be honest. Like, oh, yeah, that I was such a hard time with statistics. I was told that, you know, it's going to be so hard. But it was, I, again, it was, you know, my major is sociology and study, studying groups of people and sorting them and by whatever category you know you want to set up in your study it's like oh okay so a is this much then b is this much and here's where it meets in the middle kind of you know I was like, this makes more sense to me than y equals mx plus b <laughs> as soon as they started throwing letters in it i'm like i'm out yeah oh, yeah absolutely at that point it's sacrilege like exactly you know so, what i have that- never used algebra in my personal life they said you're gonna use this after school that was a lie no. i use basic math and sometimes i still check myself on a calculator because i don't trust myself yeah that's why oh, i'm I so glad stuff on a calculator i'm on so phone. glad that i did not decide to be a math teacher because i teach english and social studies and like i can at least make a case most of the time for why you'd want to know some of these things Math, I have such a hard time with. <laughs> so, just, so it's, just... it's very situational, like extremely situational, more so than other topics from what I've seen. Well, it depends. 
limits on what you do with your life. Mm. Like in college, I was biology major and they made us take algebra, calc and pre-calc. But like, I don't know what was up with the engineering program there. They didn't have to take calculus. And I was like, what? Why are you not doing calculus? Right. When I was criminal justice, before I switched over to sociology, the highest math I was required to take was a class called Math for Liberal Studies. <laughs> Ooh. It was hey, like, I had one of those. Nice. Yeah, it was, it, was the, it was the easy pie, you know, kind of math. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm just going to kind of pay attention and see what happens. I got, ended up getting to see it. <laughs> like, not even really trying. So, see, it's good oh. degrees. Uh, yeah. Annette, you went to the same college I did. Did you have to take the class called Survey of Mathematical Ideas? No. Oh, I had to take that one. I, I only had to take two math classes for my major. Um, one was statistics and the other one was this one. And the array of things we had to do for that class was so weird. Like, not only did we learn, like, the, like, Boolean logic, where it's like, this, if this is true, then this is true. Um, but we also learned different counting systems and in counting in systems other than base 10. It was crazy. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I actually really liked that class. I ended up taking, with the guidance of my advisor, um, it's, it was called Biometry. It was Biological Ooh. Statistics. Which, I was like, cool, I'm going to learn stuff. I didn't learn shit. Not to mention, it was my senior year. It was 8 a.m. It was the only class of the day. And my professor, like, you could tell, he was, like, ready for retirement. So it was, like, <laughs> all these Love things that. piled together. So it was just, like, no one learned anything. He was like, you can have, like, an 8 by 11 sheet of paper for a cheat sheet on the test Yo. and I write tiny like Casey can yes. I think you, you can confirm I think I write yes tiny. I can I have seen your your writing it's very tiny so I basically put all the examples from all the worksheets we ever did on a piece of paper and had it on the test that's and incredibly like, generous yeah he did that same thing for um mycology because I had him for that and he was so done I ended up convincing him to let us have a take-home test instead. Yes. And he you was had, like, uh, all right. <laughs> I, had, I had two like that. One was, um, it was data collection, which is like the third to final class for sociology. Um, but the guy, we were ho holding it in what, a place called the Wright Hall, which was in the basement of like the ROTC building. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On SDU. The projector didn't work some days, so we just canceled class. But he was ready yes. to go on his sabbatical, like a six-month <laughs> vacation. Him and his <laughs> wife were taking over to, like, Germany and France and Italy. And I was like, you don't even want to be here, do you, Myers? And he's like, I'll be honest with you, no, no, I don't. But <laughs> like, I'm going, but, you know, I'm going to teach you what you need to learn. But, you know, it was great. We We had a good class, but we always had a sense of humor about it because of that, like, as soon as some shit went wrong and that was one of the buildings they were tearing down you know uh yeah. planned the year after i graduate to tear it down i was like okay so we're we're basically in the the final stages of this building things aren't gonna work class <laughs> might get canceled today and i had a philosophy professor in my first semester at ship that uh you only had to show up for two um 50 question true or false tests for the wow. midterm and the final he didn't care about your attendance he gave you the book but if you didn't read the book you wouldn't know the true and false so like as long as you read the book uh, the intro to philosophy you were you were okay i mean i still showed up for classes class. but i mean what i would feel bad if i didn't go every time but there were some times i certainly skipped out on as 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 you do you know mm -hmm. It's part um, of the course. Yeah. I mean, I was a good seed and, like, went to most of my classes, like, every single time. Yeah. But, like, there were some classes I'm like, why am I sitting here wasting my time? Like, reading the mm -hmm. textbook mm -hmm. is way more effective. Like, I had this chemistry professor who was, like, clueless. <laughs> he 
he would confuse himself all the time. And to make it worse, he had a very, very thick, uh, what was he from? Uh, Nigeria. Nigerian okay. accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had a Nigerian professor. It was great. <laughs> I would, like, basically follow along what he was doing, but not listen to him at all and just go through the textbook and do it myself. Because he was just so confusing. And he corrected himself three times and I raised my hand because it was still wrong and I'm like don't you mean time is the variable here and he was like yeah like what the (laughs) actual heck (laughs) sir you have a PhD (laughs) I remember Dr. Zume (laughs) so I have a I had a whole rant that I do sometimes with people about um while while gen eds are important they still should be focused on the uh the bulk of your, you know, your major. Uh-huh. Um, so what Chippensburg does is, uh, I actually talked to my sister about this because she just graduated high school, and she's actually going to Millersville for um, massage therapy, so, like physical sports medicine type thing. Okay, I was gonna say, I was like, Can I, we have massage that? therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Those no, are we, all definitely, we definitely have like a sports tech program, but like, yeah. that's oddly specific. Massage. Go on. <laughs> no, but uh, so, you know, Shippensburg had it so that they had category A, B, C, D, and E. Educate, like the classes fell into that. For example, mm-hmm. philosophy fell into category A, logic with other math classes. B okay. was communication with like your um, language classes and like public Mm. speaking and stuff like that Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was easy knock that out of the way then there's like history world well they have two history classes they use as when you're a freshman for your first year they give you that it's supposed to teach you college writing i'm like that's pretty clever that they're teaching world history and writing at the same time but you know then there's category d that's what i'm getting to which is like earth sciences earth sciences has nothing to do with sociology (laughs) so that had your biology, the class that I hated to take, that, have, that you know, the ones that bring down your GPA because you're just not interested in the stuff. Mm. Conservation of natural resources <laughs> held in oh. the basement, the basement of the Earth Sciences building in the middle of the day. So it's like you either just had lunch or you're coming from lunch or you're having your last class of the day, Tuesday and Thursday for an hour and 15 minutes and you just want to go home. No one's doing well in this class that isn't, you know, really applying themselves. But we had a we had a Nigerian professor too, Doctor Zume, who taught atmosphere, and he's great. Like his accent was great to listen to while he's teaching. He's super energetic too. He said, "If you ever need help, try eating a banana. It'll replenish your brain and your blood power." It's like I ate many bananas while I had <laughs> long nights where I cried good. blood, sweat, and tears to get my <laughs> degree. And Did that just, help? I never tried it <laughs> as much as he suggested it. But, Question. uh, yes. Is he a level three wizard? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay. He's Dr. Zume. You can't cut. He said, he said, <laughs> he's like, if you guys see me around town in giant, don't, or like getting groceries, don't be like, Joseph. No, he's like, no, Dr. Zume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Love okay, it. Dr. Zume, whatever you, you want. You call me buddy. by my proper name. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of agree. Like, if you, you know, if I, I, I kind of am interested in going back and seeing about this. They say if I go to ship again and get my master's of sociology, the doctorate's only another semester away. So if I ever were to become Dr. Rolls, I'm like, no, you're all calling me doctor. Dude, if you get I mean... your doctorate, I promise you I will call you Dr. Rolls for the rest of my life. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Absolutely no, I'm I will a hundred percent do that. Absolutely. Well, I was telling Casey, uh, my boss is a PhD in microbiology. He did his PhD work on the influenza. And to keep the story short, we had a violent employee after termination, like he lost his shit, and he jabbed my boss in the forehead and called him Mr. PhD. So now, every time I have a question, I like go out to him and say, "Sup, Mr. PhD? Mr. How PhD? do you? What are we doing?" And <laughs> the running joke is, uh, 
someone's going to hurt him slash punch him in the face when he makes us mad. He asked me to do something, and uh, before he asked, he took away my scissors and my box cutter. Because he was like, you're going to hate me. You being cut off. I love this man. It's fine. I can't I can't even process the fact that this guy, who I'm sure is a wonderful person, is just like, no, I will take away all, all minutia that will require you to possibly injure me in any way, regardless of what I'm going to say to you next. You have no power here. <laughs> Before I even tell you anything I'm going to tell you at all, I must take away scissors and or box cutter. Well, like, it's funny because now since uh, since that one employee was terminated and the employee that started with me was terminated, I'm now the longest veteran employee at the company. So, Fantastic. like, he's, like, he relies on me for a lot of stuff. And uh, the, the uh, taking away the weapons is a joke (laughs) and i keep a baseball bat in my car and he knows it so when he takes away my stuff i'm like chris i'll just go out and get my bat like you're not you're not saving yourself (laughs) you just have the threat of like a blunt force object constantly hanging over his head (laughs) and i'm sure i can find something else in the lab i have pure cultures of salmonella Yo, yo, that's pretty effing dangerous. Uh, not if you know how to work with them. Fair. Fair. I mean, anything is a blunt force trauma object if you try hard enough. That Um, is absolutely correct. Just shove the Petri dish in his face. Yeah. Yeah. Then he'll he'll have two things to worry about. A traumatic brain injury and salmonella. Uh, probably deadly salmonella. That actually happened one time, not shoving a petri dish in his face. <laughs> uh, at a previous job he worked at, uh, there was a woman, I, I believe he said she was Chinese, and uh, her English wasn't great, and she dropped a bottle, and my boss thought it was just like uh, like a liquid media. He was like, oh, it's just T- uh, TSB, I'll just clean it up. Mm-hmm. What she didn't communicate to him, that it was a pure overnight culture of salmonella. Oh, God. Oh, no. He got very sick. Oh, dear God, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> These are the risks you take. <laughs> yeah. But we have tons of human pathogens, which is great. So, but just, just don't spill them on yourself. You just have them lying around? Well, they're, put, they're in the fridge. Except well, for I mean... except for Clostridium. Right next to uh, the eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Casual. Just chilling. Yeah. Uh, Clostridium, which a species of Clostridium is what causes um, C. diff. And it's an anaerobe. And it's so hard to culture that I end up just throwing the, um, like the stick uh, that we inoculate from into a bottle close it real tight and put it in the fridge or in the um, incubator and just leave it there. It stinks so bad. (laughs) Like I opened the incubator one day and it just like hit me in the face and was like, Whoa, this is nasty. Hey guys. Yes. I think Annette is smarter than all of us combined. I didn't want to say anything, but oh fuck. (laughs) Dude, I am way out of my depth. I didn't either. I like to think I that in that fridge. That... <laughs> well, yeah, all right, rolls. Fine. When you said rolls, uh, I was able to follow along with you. It's not oh, okay. my field of expertise at all, but I kind of knew what was going on. Well, I RQ... I think we're all intelligent, though. But don't be down on anyone. Fully you know? exposed. I, I don't know what inoculate means. Oh, okay. So I have this issue where, like, these terms are so second nature to me that I'm like, oh, everyone knows what that means. Uh, I get it. (laughs) Inoculating means putting an organism either on a plate or in the term that I was speaking. uh, We have these things called snapsticks that basically have um, 
uh, pure organisms in it, and they're just um, they're dormant. So then you like snap the liquid and like uh, suspend the pellet, mm-hmm. and then what I do is I throw the stick into the jar. Oh. So that's that's inoculating. So it's kind of like a glow uh... stick when you snap a glow stick and then shake yeah. it. And Except it well, you don't blowing. you don't pour out the glow stick juice. I mean, you can. Oh, wait, you don't you don't drink the glow stick juice. No. Wait. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's asking for kidney failure. Oh, shit. Okay, so they are just like glow sticks. You shouldn't drink the glow <laughs> stick. You shouldn't drink the snap stick. Uh, there you go. Oh, boy. This I'm going to need to talk in- to my doctor. <laughs> this podcast does not encourage drinking any strange chemicals. <laughs> no. If we've no. learned one thing today, children, is that you don't drink strange chemicals. Or don't Actually. assume that something's not contagious. Right. <laughs> You know or you might get strange. salmonella. You know, probably drank strange chemicals. Dead Even if savage. the strange chemicals look quite delicious, cool cat. and <laughs> tasty. Oh yeah, that would be a great uh, transition. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't you think? Uh oh, here we go. Since we wanted to talk about this, uh, yeah. Uh oh. All right, so uh, I, I just I just wanted to talk about it because I just saw the other week, the second annual 420 Awards, as hosted by Derek Savage. Right. Uh, covered by Adam and his friends from the Your Movie Sucks channel on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Hilarious stuff. I highly recommend it. Okay, so just to start from the beginning with this, this guy Derek Savage is an interesting fellow. He's an he created. Yeah, he created a... Uh, He's trying to create a children's character named Cool Cat, played by a man in a suit. Um, but the thing is, he's not very smart. <laughs> no, he's not. And he doesn't he doesn't understand like fair use. So like when channels like Your Movie Sucks and I Hate Everything were making fun of him, he's like forging uh, emails from law firms that have Yahoo email addresses. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing the sketchiest so he, of stuff. Yeah, just to like, hey, I'm going to get your channel shut down because all of a sudden I'm upset that people are... I think it finally dawned on him that people are making fun of him. They're not laughing with him. Yeah. Right. Cool it's cool cat, you know? It's, and, that, uh, it's that auteur issue where they they finally realize that like, oh, hey, wait. What I'm doing isn't actually being seen as art. It's, it's a meme. And instead of leaning yeah. into the meme, they're like, no, I'm going to fight it. The guy yeah, from the I room leaned, it, leaned into the meme eventually. Right. He, like, he did. He did. Like, this is a perfectly opposite example. Mm. So, so it's, I mean, there's still the great two parts of, from your movie sucks of Cool Cat Save the Kids, yes. which are pretty much, you know, what I would recommend to anyone to start their journey of watching this. And Adam made it's, a few videos, like, Cool Cat Learns Fair Use. <laughs> it's, it's, it's peak. It's peak cringe. It's wonderful to watch. Well, yeah. I should I should mention that it's not cool cat saves the kids. It's cool cat saves the kids. <laughs> because when this guy talks through his cat head, you can barely understand what he's saying. Yeah, and they're just the, what makes the movie great is what makes any like shitty movie good. You know, any any great uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space or Ed Wood. Right. You know, I any would, Ed I Wood would, film or something. I would put him up there with the. Uh... The guy who made Birdemic. Um, oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, that maybe guy. Neil, maybe Neil Breen. Maybe. Neil, I, I, think, I, think, yes. I think Neil Breen might be a little bit more on the fringe crazy side. I think oh, yeah, so. Neil Breen's insane. They're, they're all gen- tapping into that, like, sort of bizarre <laughs> cool I'm certain that all of Neil Breen's uh, uh, media... All of it is done in one take. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> absolutely. I don't um, think anybody has clued him into. There's actually like multiple takes that you can make. <laughs> I think he's just like, oh yeah, no, you just do it in one go. That's how filmmaking goes, right? Sure. And nobody has the heart to tell him. Well, if his budget is there for it, because you know we can only <laughs> shoot so long in my own house. We can only rent the space for so long. Right. Um. But. Okay, then Derek, after Cool Cat, he, well, he, he 
what's worse too is he's a George Lucas, and that he keeps re-releasing Cool Cat with different things edited in. Like right. after Adam made fun of the fact mm-hmm. that uh, Cool Cat did not look both ways before crossing the street, he even like though edited. he just told a kid to do that, he edited that scene yeah. in. Um, so he, you know, he's in search of the the perfect version of a movie that can never be perfect because of what it is. <laughs> right. And he then decided to make Man, gun self defense for women, which is hilarious, yes. by the way. Um, when I saw the cover to that, I really thought it was a joke. Oh yeah, it seems like he's like totally it, being. He see, he seems like he's almost like a Tim and Eric type of comedy, you know. But uh, he's yeah, like not. He's like, I, wish, I really wish that he had that level of self awareness. It would be wonderful if he did. But it's almost like it's almost like the ultimate like like Andy Kaufman troll job too. If he is, it's almost on the level of like if you found out uh, if like Brett Keen was a drunken peasant all along. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the man that absolutely you know you know what I mean though. It's just like yeah. the biggest turn in history. So would be if, if like guy, if this guy actually is self aware, this is the biggest dupe. Character, yeah, for like, sure. Character work ever in internet has, in, in internet history. He he, it's it's so convincing. Yeah, that it it ha- he has to be genuine. Right, so exactly. He he went on to create um, host the four twenty awards, which is just edited so poorly. It's just everything <laughs> he touches is just garbage, and not in like He's got like the everything garbage touch like like. Any any editor, wow. anyone who's done any kind of work in in that in the 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 field of producing movies or music, like mm-hmm. like how do you how are you still this bad at it, Derek? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> like, a sheer lack of talent. Like it is yeah, it's it's bad. It's he called, really bad. he he leaves it. What's left in is like it almost seems intentional again because he leaves in like his mispronunciation of titles. He called Ariana Grande Andre Grande. <laughs> He called the Big Lebowski my second favorite movie ever. The Big Lewinsky <laughs> <laughs> this year's 420 Awards. The Big like, Monica Lewinsky. He did it twice as well, which is this insane thing. Oh. Like, oh, I read the card wrong. I, I should correct myself. But then he reads it again. The winner is the Big Lewinsky. No, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Like and you're not fixing this in post. You just need it's, like it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's so... like Rickyisms from Trailer Park Boys. Just, yeah, like mispronunciations. He's but... like an amalgamation of so many like hilarious comedy character fuck ups in one. It's amazing. <laughs> like how can this man exist? But the crown jewel of the, the Derek Savage Empire, in my opinion, <laughs> is the Cool Cat Twitter account. Oh, no. Because oh, no. He's yeah, another character. Twitter, Twitter exactly. account. He though, tries really. to stay in character, but then sometimes he'll break oh. character. And you just, oh. just, just Google Cool Cat Twitter, you know, find a way to look up the archives of some of the crazy shit that, like, that has been well, said. Gonna, it's yeah. weird because um, he'll, he'll try and stay in character. But at the same time, he will voice the opinions of the creator. Yeah. But also in character, which he, comes off in, as intent, like intensely cringy. It's and really in character, cringy. he calls himself Daddy Derek too. Right. Oh, so right. it I just adds an extra that. level of complexity it's... to the whole proceedings. What is this what? man's uh, Twitter handle? Because I can't find ah. it. Fuck, I don't even know what his I don't know if he is. has his own Twitter handle, but just just search Cool Cat. I know I know Cool Cat has his own Twitter handle. I could Yeah, I cool think Cool Cat loves you. That's uh, it. Yeah, that's Probably there. it. Now playing Melanin Skin. Oh. <laughs> that's uh yeah. that's the first thing that came up. Uh, uh the the short film what? the short film is written and it's great capitalized. But Cool Cat Stops Coronavirus doesn't work because I can't stop it. But I oh, do God. fight it. <laughs> Please. Yeah, so... he, he goes out to the <laughs> desert in the uh, 420 movie. He goes out to the desert with a shotgun and he shoots computer generated coronavirus particles flying through the air. Oh, oh I wish God. I was I wish I was making this up to you right now. I'm I'm not nearly on enough drugs to <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> half tempted to pay him for Cool Cat saves us from coronavirus, because that sounds <laughs> like well, no, he, the greatest he did a thing. Poll. 
I want Cool Cat stops the school like... shooting. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah, and he was uh, gonna get only. it. Wasn't he going to get um fucking Adam from YMS? Uh, he, wa- he had Adam. He wanted shooter, right? Adam to be. Yeah, he wanted that. Ad- well, here's the thing. He wanted Adam to be in it, and Adam's like, "Yeah, I'll do this. This is whatever. This is." And great. then he like backed out because right? he was. Yeah, because well, Adam didn't. Derek, Derek did because Derek as did. Soon yeah, as Derek Adam was out. like, as soon as Adam was like taking the side of Alex from I hate everything, where it's like, you can't just say something's fair isn't fair use because you don't like it. Like he immediately. I'm a, mo- I, I'm a movie critic too. Like this is how I make my living is you know to do this. So like it's very important, Derek, that you understand. And he sent like long wordy three page emails until he finally made the cool cat learns fair use to like talk to everyone in a respectful way like this is why it is what it is but yeah he was gonna be in it uh Derek was actually really cool with him because what Adam was doing was saying hey if you go to the website and buy a copy of the dvd you get this teach like just all right. the stuff that came along with it so he was making money off mm-hmm. off of Adam's review yeah, yeah absolutely but then you know he sided with that and then what's cool about this is that Adam and Alex and uh, Ralph, the movie maker, now all do a podcast together, Sardana Cast. Right. Which they talk about movies and so, so there was a great like kind of side friendship that came from all this drama. So, right. and of course, all the entertainment that we got from both sides watching everyone make fun of Cool Cat, and then Derek saying, "I'm going to take down all your channels," <laughs> and YouTube apparently just letting him fought, uh, do copyright strikes. So, the alternate which universe is, in which. Adam yeah. shows up in an actual cool cat video. <laughs> oh yeah. And that that's the that's the universe that I want to live in, but unfortunately I'm stuck. I want him in his first soda if he in. does it too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Straight up. I would um, like for, for, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say funny thing real quick, uh, just to get your guys especially uh interested in your opinion, Casey. I just remembered it talking about the YouTube like that, about being able mm-hmm. to strike people. I was uploading some content for my channel the other day and uh, there was a, one of those surveys at the top of the screen that wants me to take. Uh-huh. And it was like, what is, how much do you like YouTube right now? What is, what do you, and it, it wanted me to go through and describe all the things I liked and all the things I disliked. And this was a day or two after a channel that I followed for a long time got completely demonetized when YouTube mm. reviewed 25 of their videos mm. and they decided they were not advertiser friendly, despite the fact some of these videos were already challenged to be allowed to be uh, ad, ad revenue. You know what I mean? Mm. So it was already challenged, but the computer decided, redecided that now, now we're taking everything away from you. Um, thank goodness. Patreon is a thing yeah. that these, this channel has, you know, but, uh, I, so I, I when I saw how deep the the survey was going, I actually clicked out of it because I'm like, I am not going to tell YouTube what I really think of them <laughs> because they, they Susan Lojicki is going to try to come down on me with a ban hammer, and <laughs> I don't I don't have another place to post things, you know. Oh wow, so. your YouTube channel suddenly got deleted. That's weird. Yeah. How yeah, how oh. that happened? They don't even don't try to hide it anymore. Video. Like. That's the thing. They're not even trying to be subtle about like why things are being taken down or why you know nah. the whole saga of copyright strikes and stuff has been as nah. cloudy as it is. Because if you hold the title, a, a title of the copyright title to something in a movie, uh, whether it's one of my videos like a, of a Hitman playthrough where like an opera song plays, that copyright is immediately challenged. I'm like, fine, that's I don't care. I'm not trying to make money off that. But someone. Right who's doing it like as a movie review, if like a snippet of that plays and they have, or like a, a professional review, a snippet of that plays and they can't get their money from it. That's could be a serious hit to that income, you know, for you know, at least a short time. We're the only skin in the game. <laughs> That's what sucks too. You go? Uh, well, you can't go to the other place. That Ninja, Ninja's thing that shut down. <laughs> Fucking mixer. Oh yeah. yeah. Forgot about that. So much for that Every, deal. Casey, everybody forgot about that. <laughs> well, the only reason I knew about it in the first place is because I knew one person who streamed on Mixer. So, yeah. Anyway. I um, I, I have a little bit more of, like, a little added information from all of this mess with YouTube. Because mm-hmm. for a while there, I actually was monetized for, through YouTube. Um, really? 
Yeah. Uh, for like three years. Um, and I managed to make one check. Exactly A one plus. check. Yeah. Uh, I still have it archived in my email because I was so proud of myself. Nice. Um, you, you can't, you can't, uh, retrieve any money from YouTube if you're monetized. Um, until you surpass a hundred dollars so yeah i, I know that once I, yeah I did that once and that was that was it <laughs> so yeah uh i was monetized for like three years or so and um that was fine until i got an email uh a couple of years back that was like hey guess what you're no longer monetized because you don't have enough subscribers i got we that email just- too We've just changed our policy to where you have to have like a minimum of something crazy like a hundred hours uh, total watched on your channel, um, and like a thousand a subscribers thousand, or something a thousand, like that. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have if because they don't care about subscribers or views anymore, they care about watch time. Mm. So unless you have, and I don't remember if this is the actual number, but just for uh to explain it it was something like if you don't if you don't have your subscribers or anyone else watching watching for a total of a hundred hours per week then you can't be monetized yeah it's it was crazy because i have a few i have a few videos that have really popped off like the one ghostbusters playthrough for the sega genesis one of the videos yeah. is like i like one hundred eighty five thousand views i have no idea how oh, i got man. that wow like it's it's crazy high like all the other ones are like a thousand at most but this mm. one's crazy high and it's uh I, I wanted to explain to youtube like no if you keep that popping up in people's bars people are going to keep watching that nine minute video and then they're mm. going to watch other videos on my channel it's it's all going to self-propagate if you That's let how it it's supposed to go yeah yeah but if you let it because you promote it Exactly. YouTube's algorithm is such that... But it doesn't promote if, if you're not sponsored. So it's like, just the people that want to watch my stuff are my friends that are watching it now. It's like, that's fine. That's kind of why I'm, I'm doing it for fun. Yeah. You know? But, like, if something happened, it would be cool. But, like, it, they have almost changed the game so much that, like, if you're not already established on a network, you can't. Which is, like, why that whole channel awesome shit happened that, the mm. way it did. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I would love how... to talk about that at some point, by the way. Yeah. Sure. Please. What were you going to say, Annette? I said that's kind of how Instagram uh, took a turn. Like, I was working on building a uh, a beauty Instagram, and I was getting, mm-hmm. like, that's 5, cool. 10 uh, followers, like, each day. And so I was, like, up to 300, and I was building. And then wow. all of a sudden no one was seeing anything i wasn't getting any likes i wasn't getting any new followers and then i found out that instagram changed their algorithm so then i'm like why am i doing this like you're taking taking away the ability for people that want to build and want to share their creativity and you're just kind of being like meg you're not popular enough it's like yeah oh yeah you know. your brand yeah. is not profitable <laughs> well, not That's yet. what happens when like the same companies take over every bit like google owns mm-hmm. so many things and uh-huh. facebook owns instagram now and it's like i remember when the internet first started like the very late 90s and early 2000s where it was a lot mm-hmm. youtube especially was this way it was like a wild wild west mm-hmm. where like anything could be posted nothing was kept and then the corporation started like oh i wonder if we could get on this online marketing thing and then oh, that's and when it started you yeah Please. oh only cnn can broadcast the debates even you know even if someone's doing commentary over it they, they might get pulled right. but it's like you're you're literally you're literally oligarchying one source of information on a platform that's supposed to be the most diverse or you could read the craziest shit yeah. on line and, or watch some documentaries and they totally and do that that's like hr thing where whenever they're advertising for youtube it's like yeah we're so diverse and we let anybody say whatever they want to say you know know who they it was a it was a deep it was a deep fat fried special casey um fried where uh paul was going off on this one it was like this 16 year old kid and he Uh, was like hey everybody my name is max the head 1620 
and I'm here doing Minecraft playthroughs on YouTube, and it's like the most inane fucking drivel. Like, <laughs> this is the kid that's going to teach us about fair use. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh my god. Like, it's the most, they want to convey their message, and then when they had the strike against them, they had to go through the YouTube school where, like, it's wrong to upload another person's work because A, B, C, or D. It's like, you're just oh, making... no. You're making everyone, like, feel like a fucking child now instead of, like, a creative personality. It's like, oh, Dad's gonna get us in trouble again if we upload more illegal uh, episodes of the show. For shame content creator, you should yeah. know better. Why wow, would you I try to steal business from Watch Mojo like that? <laughs> I had no idea that they make you like go through a school for that. I think I, I think I had to do it one time, actually. I forget what the content was, but I like, I, oh, I remember it was a obscure PS One game called Thousand Arms, like the first RPG. Oh yeah, there was a, date, yeah. a dating element to it too, and they had this uh, one of Yumi Hamasaki song at the beginning. I think that's what, what her name was. Um, and it's I'm sorry, I'm putting stuff away from my office bag for tomorrow. Excuse That's me okay. for a second. Um, but she had a song in the opening, and they're like, "Well, you can't. Ho- this can't be played in these countries because uh, copyright, you know." And I'm like, "Um, it's in there for 30 seconds. Can I challenge this?" <laughs> and I challenged it, and they're like, "Well, you can't live stream on your channel for a month, but wow, you can take the strike away by watching uh it's like a little kitty cat boy with a pirate hat on, and it's like, this is why piracy is wrong. I'm like, it's oh not piracy! God. It's a 30-second theme song! But, you know. <laughs> of course, you know, common wow. sense was nowhere to be found that day. For shame That's content so goofy. creator. <laughs> yes. How yes. dare you? I haven't uploaded... You need to give that to them as a content drop to, as <laughs> for people to get in the email when they, you know, they break, they break the invisible rules that YouTube has. <laughs> I haven't uploaded anything in like two years before I started uploading the uh, YouTube versions of this podcast, and I realized just how much they've changed things since I did that. Like um, how like um, <laughs> like okay, I should preface this with saying I understand why they do this, but I think it's a little funny that they have to. Um, so like when you're uploading a thing, it's like you have to answer a couple questions and one of them is like is this uh mm-hmm. is this is this meant for is this meant for children? No, it's not meant for children. Are there any children in this video? No. And then like you go through like writing all the descriptions and the tags and everything and then it's like no seriously is this meant for yeah. children? Like, really Are you though. sure? Because really think about it. Unboxing video because if it is like real talk, we'll we'll like get you taken care of. Yeah, it's 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 changed from the old uploader. That's the new one. I actually have liked it because it gives you a chance to put like a title card in the end, like with like your subscription and like the next re- recommended video. So it makes my videos look yeah. a little spiffier with an extra ten seconds of work. But That's I understand good. what you mean because I'm answering that for. The two playthroughs I do on Monday and Friday weekly now, which we'll get back to the one that we were doing before when we have right. a chance. Um, but yeah, they're like, is it, you know, based on the child, the CCPA law, and is, you know, if kids are in this video, it can't be, or is it yeah. made for children? And the interesting thing is, like, I'll look up something. Here's my nerd example for the day. Um, I'll look up something from, like, the Digimon. English dub, and I might want to save it to my favorites, but I can't because the video was marked designated for children. I was like, really? You can't you can't add to a playlist. You can't download it to watch later if you have YouTube Premium. There's so many things you can't what? do with these videos. That's so weird. Yeah, and uh, wasn't that a response to like the weird like <laughs> Peppa Pig eats bacon <laughs> type videos? Oh like, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> And it, it's, I miss it those. Even gotten to the point where you can't like put your phone into portrait mode under like certain videos. Yeah. It which is I I don't understand. Spider Man and Elsa. Right. And I think it was like <laughs> Elsa Gate or something like that. And then the uh the five finger videos. Finger you know, family. Yeah, that that one. Oh yeah. 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 
where they were like, they were really creepy, <laughs> but they just took the same song and then just had really bizarre, creepy animations with it. Mm. I was, and it, I, I didn't know how big that Ryan kid was. Like, I mean, Ryan's, Ryan's World, the toy channel, whatever. That, like, that kid is set he for was the, life. Yeah, he was the lead earner. For sure. Last year. And then I saw I, his shit, definitely. like, in Walmart. Yeah, no, no. Like, Target has. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's I crazy to me. Well. Yeah. I mean, kids, the last time I saw that was, like, when Five Nights at Freddy was big. They had the toys and shit. absolutely love. Miles. Other kids unboxing things and playing with toys. It's so I mean, weird. It, it, that is it weird. Makes, I it never makes would have sense, watched that. It, like, like, imagine you being a kid and you wanting a specific toy and then you going to somebody else's birthday party and that toy oh. is there <laughs> and you get to see your best friend, like, unbox it and, like, yeah. play with it. Like, I, I get that. I absolutely get that. I'm well, not going to be able... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. It's also comparable to watching Let's Plays. Yeah. Like, for adults, it's like, oh, like I want to play this game, but I either can't afford it, or I'm too chicken to play this horror game, so I'm going to watch it instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not confused as to why they exist. I'm just amazed that it's so incredibly popular as it is. Yeah. There's absolutely a market for it. I'm not going to post it in the links because I don't think I'll ever be able to find it. But I did see once, uh, secondhand, I watched, I, I like looked over a kid's shoulder um, when uh, we were uh, babysitting some kids. Uh, and I was just like, oh, what are you watching over there? And it was this video of this girl who, I think it was, it was like, I guess it was her birthday and like the dad is filming her opening these gifts um but she's like how many gifts are there here cuz he's like panning around the room and it's just filled with gifts and he's like there's 52 boxes here you get to open them all up and it's just this one video of her opening these boxes and like the dad just like like laughing with joy watching her open these boxes and it was one of the most bizarre experiences in my life all those See, toys that you're gonna step on in the middle of the night it's so weird we had as me and my older brother are are 12 years older like i just said my sister my younger sister just graduated high school so we didn't really experience this like the two of us we were adults sort of when my stepdad and came into my life, right? Not adults, but teens. Like, we we weren't, like, kids that were wanting new toys and shit all the time. I'm so... I can't really make sense of what I'm trying to express. <laughs> I'm trying my best. But, um... Anyway, so see, being that much older and watching the younger kids at Christmas and on their birthday and stuff was always, like... Honestly, it's like, I think it attributed to me becoming, like, a sociology major because it was so funny to see in a group setting, like, one kid being depressed, even though they had the the same amount of money spent on them for toys or gifts as, like, my sister had. But my sister got, you know, being a, a girl that's into, like, like, she's, you know, into the typical things, like, of the clothes and the, you know, the Hannah Montana toy sets and all these things that are, like, $8 a piece. Right. She has this whole stack of things. My brother has, you know, his sports stuff that he wanted, and then it's like significantly less. But we're like, oh, well, Chloe's opening another gift. <laughs> so I can't imagine it would be as as interesting as an unboxing video. But I can't imagine. I mean, I guess I can see it for like tech wise now as an adult, like wanting yeah. to see things like that. But as a kid, I would have been watching cartoons. <laughs> But they make those weird cartoons on YouTube now too. I think a lot of parents just get them, get them the uh, the forty dollar tablet, put one of those twenty dollar yeah. rubber protectors around it. Yeah. Go to YouTube Kids and say, "Here, watch this all day. I don't want to interact with you." Yeah, that's that is absolutely a thing. I've seen mm-hmm. it happen. Yeah. I mean, my nephew has that. I mean, I'm I'm sure that. I mean, this is this is really just the the modern day equivalent of go outside and play and don't come back till dinner sort of thing. Pretty much. So like, 
your kids don't want to go out and play all day and come back at dinner, so here's something else instead. Mm -hmm. Just to keep them entertained. Yeah. Yeah, because when you're a kid, you don't don't have as high as us, like, you can't pay attention for as long, and it's harder to keep yourself entertained. Right. So, when you have that ability, you might as well go with it. You know who was able to keep themselves entertained as a kid? The kids who like to read. Yes. <laughs> From a young age. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the uh that those are the, the people that have the higher attention spans. Um yeah. unless you're like me and have ADHD as well. A <laughs> hey. I'm really like I'm really into this story, but I also want to climb under the desk at school for some reason now. <laughs> I always had a problem with reading. Um, not that I uh, like didn't struggle with reading, but that I couldn't focus on the page. Focus. Um, I, I, on I have that problem to this day. Hard. Um, yeah. For me, audiobooks are actually the like the optim, optimal way to read a book because it, it absolutely I can yeah I can do something else in the background while also absorbing that information and not having to focus specifically on a single page, you know? I feel Audible like I... To make new ads. Sorry, to be interrupted. It's okay. Right. I get interrupted right. a lot. I'm used to it. Um, oh, God. Audiobooks. I feel like I retain less information when I listen to audiobooks, but that might just go back to being like, like, I'm a... I have to see things. Like, mm-hmm. I have to see the words on the page in order to be able to absorb and understand it. Mm. And I guess there that's similar. Some... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I guess that's similar sorry. to like studying techniques. Like some people, they can just listen to the professor and be like, "Cool." Me and a lot of my friends in college, like they had to see the words in order to be like, "Okay, I know this. I know this answer." But you asking me, I no, I need to see it. It's the difference between like a visual learner and an like an auditory learner yeah. that yeah. sort of thing i think for me audiobooks like i can listen to like an adam carolla or a pen Gillette or like bill burr on like podcasts too um <laughs> tell tell their stories while driving and while like having my headset on or whatever but when it comes to like fantasy and stuff i prefer to see that in the book mm, that's interesting. because I, it's i think it there's only so much like for like if you're imagining like a, an area from Lord of the Rings, uh, you can, it's very, for me, it's easier to picture it while reading about like what Rivendell looks like as opposed right. to have someone describe it to me or to see it on the screen. And then it's like, oh, this is definitely what it looks like. That's interesting. I never thought of it that way. Because I think people can picture things different ways. So it's like, however, you're seeing the setting for your your young adult high school book. Like I might, you're picturing your high school, but I'm picturing the halls of my high school while I read it. Yes. Right. If that makes sense. It's all about your own experiences that you relate to the words you're reading. Right. Well, hey guys, I have one <clears throat> quick story before we wrap it up because I've been meaning to get to this for like three weeks and we keep having these conversations and I'm like, oh, I feel really bad trying to interrupt with this. Take us out, but Casey. Like, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take us home with uh, quite possibly the nerdiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> so, Dave, you know about this because we had conversations like in February <laughs> about it. Oh, here we go. Um, okay, so I, I also explained this to Rolls, but I'm going to re-explain it so it makes a little more sense. Um, so, uh, I grew up with Harry Potter. Um, like, I was the exact age... Oof. <laughs> that you had to be in to uh, really enjoy it. And I know that seems a little kind of yucky right now with what's going on with, I was gonna say, we with can do it. J.K. Rowling. Ms. But Rowling. It, it leads into something different. So uh, this is just background. Um, so, like, I was always really into um, the lore of that series and, like, all the background stuff and all that. Um, and... At one point in time, I was, I was, um, I have this book that I got for Christmas last year as like an unofficial Harry Potter guide of some, something. Um, and it, one of the pages was explaining all the different types of wood that they use for wands. 
And I was looking at that and I was like, huh, that's interesting. Do you think there's a place where they make avocado wands or like cherry wands or apple wands? And I was looking it up and I was like, hmm. There are a lot more different types of trees that grow food than I thought there were. And that led me into this incredible rabbit hole of fruits that I had never heard of that grow on trees and bushes and the like. And that led me to the question, how feasible would it be for me to try every fruit? Every and so, one. All of uh, them. yeah, all of them. Because I realized just how many fruits there are that exist that I had never heard of. And like, these exist somewhere and I want them. Don't ask me why. But for some reason, I just, I really want to try all these different types of fruits. Uh, the only way to fix this is uh, take a flight around the world, find the fruits, and eat them. Pretty much, because the- it's become increasingly obvious that that's impossible at the moment. <laughs> In the meantime, there was a show that used to be on the Travel Channel called mm-hmm. Bizarre Foods with Andrew oh, Zimmer. Oh, yeah. oh, my boy! You gotta check it out. <laughs> Oh, that he does. Sense. That is exactly his story of traveling to different areas and yeah. just trying what is considered to be a normal. And he he is not shy about what he eat. I think the only thing he didn't like, he said he couldn't eat. Actually, I, if I recall, it was avocados. That <laughs> or like was really interesting. It was a it was a really weird things. like basic popular English you know dish. Huh. Out of all but it was like that's what he doesn't. But he'll eat like the insects. He'll eat uh, stuff they just pull off a tree. You know, he'll he's right. like century eggs. Because the idea is Shit like that. If, as we sit down and we eat with each other, we exchange cultural ideas and we bring the world right. closer together, which I think is a good idea. So you could you could possibly be the next bizarre foods with you know. I mean, whatever I your stage name to. will be. Because the captain. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I... Because I have this thing where I just obsess over things like a crazy person, uh, I have this Excel spreadsheet. Oh, God. Of, I'm not kidding. Annette, you'd be proud. Um, uh, so, I... <laughs> I have this this spreadsheet... Uh, of all the different types of fruits that I've discovered that I would like to try, and no lie, it is 317 columns long. It is a (laughs) mammoth of a document. It is, and it's only gotten bigger, in which I've tried to literally try as many as I can, and I have tried many at this point. Okay, so... I'm only like 10% of the way through. Are we talking about, like, fruits in the botanical sense, or, like, fruits in the traditional sense? Like, you know what Uh, I mean? In the botanical uh, sense, everything is a fruit. A nut is a fruit. Uh, we're talking culinary fruits. Okay. A legume. (laughs) There are some legumes on this list. Yes. Which is the the, uh, scientific family that cashews belong in, I've learned. Right. So, now, to I'd answer your question, because I'm sure everybody's thinking it, I have tried a durian. Okay. Because there was a there's an Asian market here in town where I live that I was able to discover a, a like a frozen cut out portion of durian. Um, it tasted pretty good actually. It tasted like garlic, but it was also sweet. It's very strange and soft had me a garlic <laughs> yeah yeah it's just weird when you when you eat something that isn't garlic and it tastes like garlic something natural that isn't garlic but tastes like garlic mm. but I... yeah that that's what i've been doing the last six months <laughs> i ate these brownies one time and <laughs> <laughs> not that that is kind of brown <laughs> and as soon as i took a bite my brain was like this tastes like raw salmon because oh. I do eat raw sushi mm-hmm. and I love raw salmon, but I'm like, this shouldn't taste like mm-hmm. this. That's interesting. It was so weird. I'm like, what is in this? That's making it taste like that. There has to be some sort of like 
chemical reaction that happened to make it taste like that. That is weird. What an odd experience. You, so what, ever, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Casey. Did you ever figure out why it tasted that way? Yeah, like no. what kind of brownie was it? <laughs> it was like it was one of those like bakeless brownies that had like uh. like a lot of the thickening was like banana, but oh. like there was banana and like cocoa and obviously sugar, but. I don't know what happened with that. If I don't know, it was the most odd sensation I ever had. <laughs> it's like you smell something and it brings you back to a place. Yeah. I tasted that and I was like, raw salmon. What a weird connection. I'm sure there's some explanation. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> what can make something taste like raw science fish? Sciency listeners, please. If you have any clue why that would happen, leave a comment wherever this is. I have no clue where it's going to be. Mm-hmm. On the Facebook page, perhaps. RSS well, feed. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up, Dave. Uh, because at the close of our show here, I want to mention that um, uh, if you want to make sure that you always know when we upload these, these podcasts. For some reason. Um, for some reason um not only do we have a facebook page is facebook.com slash uh i think it's hold on let me check just to make sure because i'm dumb like that it's let's regroup podcast is what it is um so that's what that is on facebook we also have our youtube channel which is let's regroup podcast uh and if for whatever reason you want to deliver some sort of comments or questions to us any that you may have you can always Drop us a line at let's regroup pod at gmail.com. Those are our handles. You know what would be interesting though? If people yes. ask questions and like we like read the questions and like answer them on the podcast. Oh hell yeah. If that were to happen, that'd be interesting. I, I'd be all for that. We had we never got that chance during our old podcast, mm-hmm. and I really hope we can get that to happen this time. Because uh believe it or not, we've actually had quite a bit of reception from this so far uh really? yeah we can, give um, listener, we can give relationship advice love in, <laughs> exactly uh, in, in total i know, we've, I know we've all had, the red flags <laughs> well, great then we then we have a, a full cast of of characters who can help us with that problem mm. <laughs> Please. whatever that may be send us your relationship problems we will fix them guaranteed Absolutely. Or make them completely worse. We make no, no promises. That's the risk you take when sending it to Let's Regroup Podcast. And I'll help. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> on that note, That's we're going to end off this episode. <laughs> we're going to end off this episode. So, thank you for listening. Uh, make sure if you don't follow those those different handles that you do so. And until then, for... Myself, Casey, Rolls, Dave, and Annette. This has been Let's Regroup Podcast. You're welcome, Internet.